Jeff was completely and utterly unique and a kind of musician which, uh, <laughs> who's impossible to define. And um, I was absolutely in awe of him. And, you know, he's only a couple of years older than me and came from the same area where I came from. But he was a hero to me all along, um, doing things which I kind of dreamed of doing when I was at school even. He was already up there in the Tridents and then in the Yardbirds, um, doing extraordinary things and a major, major inspiration for me to try and do the same. Not the same, but to to give myself a voice the way he had. I wrote him a song. I wrote Well, I wrote a song about him called The Governor for one of my solo albums, and he came over to my place here in the studio, played it with me, and we had a laugh, and he played some incredible stuff. Again, my jaw dropped. I couldn't really pick up a guitar when he was in the room <laughs> because it was so incredible. Um, just wanted to watch and listen. So he played on the track and he was like, oh yeah, whatever. And I, I, I don't think I could ever put into words exactly how much I did revere him. I hope I gave him the picture. <laughs> I don't know if he, he knew, but so many incredible things he did. He was wild. He was unquantifiable and extraordinarily difficult to understand but one of the greatest guitar geniuses the world has ever seen and will ever see. And I'm standing on the stage, we're ready to rehearse, and I'm surrounded by my heroes really, there's Phil Collins on drums, um, there's Joe Cocker out front, and we're about to perform the iconic Joe Cocker hit, which is a little help from my friends, the Beatles song, which is something amazing, you know, what an amazing thing to be able to do for me as a young guy. Next to me, is Eric Clapton, and I'm thinking, oh, just because of that, because he's my hero, and he still is, you know. And Eric turned to me and said, um, so this riff at the beginning, uh, do you want to play that riff at the beginning? And I went, I kind of froze, because I'd assumed that being Eric Clapton, he would want to do it. It goes, and it's something that every guitarist would love to do, you know. So he said, why don't you do it? You know, you do it, Brian, you know, and I'm, I'm very happy to just do the rhythm. So I was kind of electrified. Ed Van Halen was a phenomenon, and I guess that hardly needs saying. I met him for the first time through Tony Iommi, my great friend from Black Sabbath, uh, when I was watching the two of them, and Van Halen were opening up for Black Sabbath. I mean, that was something to see. It was in the Circus Krone in uh, Munich, and I hadn't seen that. Uh, Tony for a while and I'd never seen Van Halen. Luckily I got there in time to see him play and I was just like, wow, what is this? What is this guy? What is he doing? I can't even begin to, to figure out how his fingers are moving, what he's doing. It was a bit like seeing Jimi Hendrix for the first time. Like, how does anyone do that? What has he got that is so magical that we've never seen before? go to the Marquee Club when you when you first went the time you saw Test what made you go there what was it about the place <laughs> that Marquee Club well it was the legendary place in those days that's where everybody played who was anybody and me and my mates used to go down there wherever we could whenever we could I beg your pardon um, and certain nights would be certain things Mr G was there the manager you know saying this is so-and-so night or whatever and Thursday night for a long time I think was the nice we used to go and see the nice every week. Um, and Rory Gallagher also had a residency there. And we used to go and see Rory every week and just open-mouthed, I think, at the way the guy played and the person he was and the way he interacted with his audience, the way he could just hold people by tapping his foot or clicking his fingers or whatever he did, you know, he was just a magician as far as we were concerned as an entertainer. And funny, funnily enough, he probably wouldn't think of himself as an entertainer. He's, he's such a pure man, Rory, you know. Uh, he, he thought of himself as a musician and he never made any compromises towards being building himself into a superstar. 
But we went there every, every week and saw Taste and they were magnificent. It was incredible. And his playing was incredible. You know, he's one of the very few people of that time who could make his guitar do anything, it seemed. It just seemed to be magic. I remember looking at this battered Stratocaster and thinking, how does that come out of there? You know, how does he do it? Brian May here. Ask me the question, who is my rock god? It's easy. It's Jimi Hendrix, who, in my opinion, cannot have been from this planet. It's something extraordinary from some other place in the cosmos. And if they all play guitar like that out there, I want to go there. Yeah, he will always be my hero, my rock god, without a doubt. I wish he was around today. I wonder what he would have been doing. All I ever did really was play the way I feel and make the guitar my voice. I, I play like I would like to sing. I'm not the world's greatest singer. Um, <clears throat> not the world's greatest guitarist either, but thank you for saying so. But I can speak with the guitar. I can I can make it sing, and that's that's all I do. It just comes from inside. I, and um, oh. I don't think any guitarist should feel like they have anything to prove. It's not a competition. You know, Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain is a great example. You know, there's not a lot of technical stuff there, you know, and he didn't work that hard at being technical, and yet he gives us a legacy of some of the greatest guitar music of all time. So it's there not about technique. It's about what you put into it, what you feel, and how that feeling gets across in your guitar playing.